Street on YouTube. In this video, I am going to introduce to you the topic of alcohols. We shall be talking about the methods of preparation and the properties of alcohols. But don't worry, we are not going to do all of them in one go. In this video, I am introducing to you a very, very easy way of understanding and remembering alcohols, their behavior, their properties. So what I've done is on the left panel of this flowchart that you see on your screens, got, we've got the preparatory methods of alcohol. So you see the arrows leading from aldehydes and ketones to alcohols, halo alkanes to alcohols, alkenes to alcohols, similarly acyl chlorides to alcohols and so on. Whereas on the right panel, you will see alcohols showing different types of behavior. So we have the breaking of the OH bond, the breaking of the CO bond in alcohols, the reactions of dehydration, oxidation, dehydrogenation. And there's a specific reaction which is characteristic of ethanol. So we've got all these reactions in a beautiful flow chart listed over here. And if you see, there are a number of colors being used over here. Why the colors? Experience as well as science says that human mind connects to colors, not just human mind. Birds, animals also connect with colors. So if you go through the flow chart slowly, and then gently close your eyes. Try to remember a reaction with the help of its color. The bold arrows, the bold green color, the red color, they will help you to remember the properties of alcohols. Now, you can take, you're most welcome to take a screenshot of this flowchart and if you want to see it in depth. So what we've got over here, don't worry, we are going to write the reactions also of this, but later on in further videos. So I'm introducing over here, so you've got alkenes. Alkenes getting converted into alcohols. What are the various ways that we can do that? We can do it by hydration in the presence of a few drops of concentrated H2SO4. Now, what is this M dot P? Hmm. It's not the state that I'm talking about. It refers to the Markovnikov product. Now, for those who've been following the channel, they will remember that when we did the properties of alkenes, we spoke about the Markovnikov rule. The positive part of the adding reagent goes to the carbon bearing more number of hydrogen atoms. When you add an unsymmetrical alkene to an unsymmetrical reagent. So when you react it with concentrated H2SO4 or oxymercuration followed by demercuration. In all these cases, you get a Markovnikov product. Whereas if you carry out the addition of water by the method of hydroboration oxidation, what do you get? An anti Markovnikov product. Similarly, let's go on to the next method of preparation of alcohol. Haloalkanes. We did it in the last chapter as well. Haloalkanes react with aqueous NaOH or moist silver oxide to give us alcohols. Don't worry, we will be writing these reactions later on. I repeat, but this is introducing to you the flowchart method. Aldehydes and ketones. Now, aldehydes and ketones can be converted to alcohols by different methods. So the first one is reduction. What you have to remember here is the aldehydes get converted into primary alcohols. Whereas ketones get converted into secondary alcohols using lithium aluminum hydride, the short form for which is LAH or sodium borohydride, NABH or NBH as well. Aldehydes and ketones also react with Grignard's reagent where an addition reaction takes place followed by hydrolysis. 
So what do we get? Methanol gives us primary alcohol. Any other aldehyde other than methanol gives us a secondary alcohol. Whereas ketones on reacting with Grignard's reagent followed by hydrolysis give, give us, yes, tertiary alcohols. You are getting there. Talking about carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids also can be converted to alcohols by reducing it with lithium aluminium hydride followed by hydrolysis. Interestingly, carboxylic acids cannot be reduced by sodium borohydride. You can write it as NABH or NBH. And lithium aluminium hydride, although does reduce carboxylic acids, it's an expensive reagent. So what do we do? A better method would be to convert carboxylic acids to esters. Now these esters can be either reduced, can be reacted with Grignard's reagent followed by hydrolysis or they can undergo acidic or alkaline hydrolysis to give us alcohols. So see, it's easier, right? Whereas in the case of carboxylic acids, you could only reduce it by an expensive reducing agent. Here you have so many other options. Again, if you take the ester of methanoic acid, you get a secondary alcohol. If you take any other ester, you get a tertiary alcohol. How does the reaction take place? Wait and watch for other videos where we will be discussing this in detail. Acyl chloride. They on reduction with lithium aluminium hydride or sodium borohydride give us primary alcohol. That's why I've mentioned over here one degree alcohol. You remember one degree, two degrees, three degrees? We've also spoken about these alcohols and these types of carbon atoms in a separate video where we went through thoroughly the primary, the secondary, the tertiary, the terms like iso, neo and n. Primary amines, they on reacting with nitrous acid give us primary alcohols. We cannot prepare the secondary and tertiary alcohols by this method. That is why specifically mentioning one degree alcohol. Here again, nitrous acid is not readily available. So we prepare it in situ. That is inside the reaction mixture itself. So I hope this makes the understanding of this flow chart easier. I'm going to introduce the properties as well, the details of the properties as well in the next video. So stay tuned, stay connected, but stay happy. That's the key to learning and enjoying your learning. So see you in the next video.